as a creator, receiving feedback is not always the easiest thing because we pour so much of ourselves and so much into who we are into this project. And it is scary to hear feedback. And sometimes people are mean and sometimes people mean well, but they're not necessarily skilled to provide that feedback, which leads a lot of podcasters to not seek coaching, to not seek feedback or consulting to help their podcast grow, even though they may be stuck. This podcast episode is going to help you reframe feedback and how to take feedback in a way that helps you grow your podcast, helps you see potential uh, blind spots that you didn't get to before, and also learn about what can happen to your podcast once you get feedback going, whether that's from a coach, uh, a guest, or even your community. I'm Anna Xavier. I'm the founder of The Podcast Space. I'm an award-winning podcast marketer, but also a coach for podcasters who are impact-driven and want to get more visible to show up to become the thought leaders they always dreamed of being, but also at the same time, get to their business goals. So let's dive into this week's episode of The Podcast Space. First things first, I'm going to assume here that you may be able to take feedback, but there's always that type of feedback that whether it's something that we are very passionate about, or maybe we've been struggling to get feedback because we're frustrated because nothing's working. Maybe we received feedback from someone who was not necessarily qualified to provide feedback. We tried things and they ended up not working. Maybe you paid a lot of money for that feedback and ended up not helping you grow a podcast or get to your business goals. I totally get you. So I'm going to just say right away, those fears are valid. And the internet is filled with a lot of scammers. The internet is also filled with a lot of people who are incredibly great and amazing at what they do. However, they're too afraid to show up. They're too afraid of being and sounding salesy, or even just showing up online and taking space. So a lot of people will have great uh, feedback to give you. And it doesn't mean that just everyone who shows up on your DMs or on your inbox um, has feedback that is not applied or constructive that can work for you. So really open up the idea that feedback can be collaboration. Feedback can be a more... um, kind of like relaxed way to tell you that your podcast could be different in some way. And so the best way to avoid taking feedback as like a personal attack is to look at it with curiosity. And so, so often I work with podcasters who are leaders in what they do. And because you're too close to what you're doing, sometimes you miss uh, some important context, or maybe you miss some facts about your audience that is not helping you grow and is not the context it may not be resonating, or maybe you're not really listening to what they're telling you. And so sometimes feedback, when we look at it from the curiosity perspective, the fact that it's like, hey, what if I was to listen to this? What if I was to remove that preconceived notion that I have to know everything about it? Because oftentimes, and it's something that I notice with experts, when I'm talking to someone, someone may get very defensive because they think that they have to tell me that they know everything about what they do, everything about their audience, everything about, you know, the customers that they're serving. When in reality, it's just sometimes is someone with a different context bringing you awareness of this thing that you may not have noticed before, or just bringing a different avenue for you to uh, ponder on it in the future, or just a little of a tweak, not necessarily like deconstructing your whole podcast concept or reconstructing your whole idea about that genre. And so when we're looking at having more feedback, it's also being more coachable, right? I've read about someone talking about how if we're going to the gym, if we're looking for a personal trainer to help us enhance a specific part of our body, maybe we're struggling with a a specific type of exercise, or maybe we want to like, let's say you're in your 40s and you want to get better endurance for your older years. Um, If we're doing that for our bodies, why wouldn't we do for our mind? And like, that's how a therapist should be seen. And it blew my mind. And that's the exact same thing that I feel like, especially because I worked with a lot of business coaches. One of the things they told me was the real struggle about promoting their services, because a lot of like high performance leaders didn't want to admit that they had 
coaching in their leadership. And I thought it was really interesting and I totally understood. And so we had to shift the way that they were presenting results because they were really struggling to get customer testimonials for their show, for their website, for their brand. And so I kind of understood where they were coming from, but it doesn't mean that you can't promote your coaching services, you just got to find a different way to, uh, to pitch it, right? And so when we're talking about being coachable, it's also about being humble and really understanding like you don't know what you don't know. And uh, when you're looking at the expertise that you have, there's always, there's always a way to get to the result you want. There's just different paths to it. And so some paths may include spending more money on ads. Other paths include incorporating more solo episodes into your content. Other uh, paths include doing more targeted uh, guest pitching to people that have the influence that you want to have and by association be the thought leader. But sometimes we get so stuck in looking at the only way that we think something can be done because we don't know, we don't have the whole picture, right? Um, it feels like it's like impossible. And so we deflect feedback and suggestions and coaching. And so that's when I think when you're like really deflecting something, you're saying like, no, it cannot be done. No, it cannot be achieved. It's maybe because you're like holding too tight to your set of beliefs about reality. And it's really important to say, are you being coachable right now? Do you have everything that you need in order to make that decision? And that's when feedback from your audience, from guests, from your coach can really help you grow your awareness about what's possible and help you get to the results faster. And oftentimes, when a client comes to me and they say, hey, I want to get a sponsor, but my downloads aren't big enough. And I get this question all the time during my uh, free consultation discovery calls. Um, I get so many people who think they're not where they're supposed to be. And, you know, something is not possible. And so they're iterating all of these different ways in which they think they have to do or maybe they have to um, work really hard for another six months and then they can go and pitch the this person or sponsor and and coaching is one of those things that if you do have the resource to invest you're saving time and I don't think enough people understand that people think that they need the results first to get to a level when they need the coaching to understand what other ways they can uh, do that path that they haven't thought about that they don't have the expertise to to get there or and I know this is very specific to me because I'm well connected in the industry I know exactly like who is this person to connect to or what are the paths that you can use or all the different news and the latest trends in podcasting that can really help a client grow without them needing the thousands of downloads without needing to have uh, a big presence it's like about leveraging what their skill set is they feel sustainable to help them grow. And so when you're looking at feedback, it's just someone sometimes trusting that someone's saying, you don't need to become a bigger podcaster to have the capacity to be coached, right? Because I feel like a lot of times we get in our heads about we're not worthy of this. We're not worthy of that yet. And when we're thinking about feedback again with that curiosity and that humility, is to say, I should be able to get this because it's going to help me discover more about myself, about my podcast, about what is possible for me in the future. And then last but not least, something that I see a lot is people who are afraid of being criticized because, and this is something that I struggle with myself as well, that is we were brought up and in the 90s and early 2000s, we were brought up with the idea that there's only one way to do things. And so you're wrong if you're not doing that way. And I feel like a lot of people are limited in their scope of what's possible because they have been all their lives or most of their life come to believe that there's only one way to do it in, in podcasting. Like you need the downloads in order to get everything you want. And to remove that fear of criticism to say, you can try this. And even if it's wrong, you can pivot. But that's not the end of the sentence. And so when you're looking at your path, I want you to really consider that. Are you taking that feedback, understanding and asking clarifying questions, right? Like, are you asking things that will help you get there? Or are you like hoping for like the absolute question that didn't get that didn't that wasn't given like I hear this all the time from potential clients when they're like, well, but what is the path to grow my show? And I'm like, well, I need more questions or we need to test. 
And um, so many of these things really block a lot of people from receiving feedback because they want the absolute answer. And if it isn't, they're like, well, then I don't want to know. And so I want you to think about like, where in your life were you asking for feedback? And maybe the person was too rough, or maybe they didn't lead empathetically, or maybe they were just kind of like, expecting you to have all the answers and you didn't. And so basically just, it was a really awkward situation and you didn't want to move forward with something. Or maybe you were getting coached and whatever you tried didn't work. And so it felt like asking for feedback is, gonna, is just going to lead to nothing, right? So I invite you to really think about like, what kind of has been the the kind of like connecting moments in your life where you ask for feedback and it got delivered harshly or what was what did it make you feel after it right and so i want to also let you know that not all coaches are created equal and so when you're thinking about taking feedback one you need to take more of that curiosity vibe instead of just you know they're telling me i'm right or wrong um but also thinking about how can you show up in a way that you you yourself is more coachable how can you take more listener feedback and guest feedback so you can improve little by little because sometimes the biggest changes happen by taking small action and just being willing to be open and listen. A lot of podcasters made really important pivots in their uh, journeys that came from someone making a comment that they're like, oh my god, I did not think of that, right? For instance, in personally, I realized that I had not been talking as much about what my work actually is. And it was brought up by a peer and I was like, I've been so afraid of promoting my services that I've been talking about all the things related to podcasting that I am an expert in, but not necessarily what is exactly connected to the service that I actually provide. So that was eye opening for me. And that's why season two of the podcast space is called marketing metrics and mindset, because those things are the things that actually help clients with. And I was like, I need to change that. And again, I'm an expert in what I do. And it was a blind spot for me. We can always improve, we can always change. And so I invite you to book a a free discovery call on the website, thepodcastspace.com slash grow. It's a 30 minute call where we talk about what your struggles are and possible ways to fix those. And uh, yeah, it's just relaxed, just like I'm talking to you right now through this podcast episode is the same. So I would love to talk to you to understand a little more about your needs, about your timeline and what you would want to to achieve. So visit the podcastspace.com slash grow. And without further ado, as we close every single episode, my invite to you to continue creating content that's imperfect but moves you forward. I'll see you in the next episode.